morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, April 17th, 2018, 621 a.m. Oh, boy. You're looking at current temperatures this morning as of right now. Uh, we can see our highest temperature wants to be about 66 in two different areas of Texas. We got West Texas, and then we have South Texas, not to be confused with this, the uh, town of West Texas. This is West Texas, if that makes sense. Anyway, good news, and I got some bad news. Uh, the good news is um, this may not be a severe storm, but the bad news is we are dealing with another winter storm, and it may be named. You can see here we have winter weather advisories um, in Minnesota. We got Iowa in there. We got uh, the south area of Wisconsin and northern Illinois, as it looks like. Um, also is South Dakota, Nebraska. Um, and we already said Minnesota, I guess. But you can see inside that pink right there, that is winter weather advisories. Around that is winter storm watches. And let's look at why this is happening. And part of it is because we have a moisture system that just came in off the northern area of California. It's getting pushed across Colorado now. And you can see this deep blue color here. This is exactly where the storm is now. Um, it is already dropping snow, apparently. So this is not something that's going to happen eventually. It is already happening. Uh, you can kind of see it here moving across the country, and then we have the warnings right here. So this system moved in northern California, like I said, kind of looped up this way, and it stayed high. So now we have the moisture that is covering North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota. And with the dip in the jet stream, once again, that is what's causing this to freeze. And this is also going to be a rain system for the Northeast. That is somewhat the good news. I was saying good news for a little bit for the Northeast. Uh, if we watch this radar here, you can kind of see the bulk of this storm coming right over northern California, then moving across Colorado uh, with moisture coming in underneath it from the Baja region of California. Now, what we've been seeing lately is these storms meeting right about here are the low pressure systems. This would be low pressure. This would be a low pressure. They would meet in the middle here, and then they would kind of pull up moisture from the Gulf and then form that nine symbol we've been dealing with. You can kind of see it here with the remnants of... Uh, winter storm Xanto and that big spring storm we just had that is now allowing a lot of cool air to be swooped underneath towards the Great Lakes. That's why it's so cold in the northeast and the upper parts of the U.S. We have this gap right here. The moisture here, low pressure, low pressure, low pressure. Warm air coming up a little bit into this area here. That's why we have those warm pr uh, temperatures in Texas and a little bit along the southern Gulf Coast. Uh, but the cold air is just ripping down from Canada now and it's covering the entire upper part of the country. And that is why any moisture that moves into this area, <coughs> excuse me guys, uh, any moisture that moves into this area that touches this cold air will be snow. And that is why we are dealing now with um, literal winter storm advisories. You can see here in the pink winter storm warning um, is all in this area, which is mostly Minnesota and Iowa. That will move a little to the right, uh, to the east um, in direction terms, Wisconsin and like I said, Illinois. Uh, these areas here will probably see some sort of wintry flow. Uh, there are parts of Michigan and the upper part, uh, northeast part of Wisconsin, that could see up to a foot of snow because of this. More likely th um, along the east side of the Great Lake here. Um, that is lake effect snow, guys. We talked about that all season long. Um, and besides that, like I said, as it moves a little bit this way, there's a moisture system, com uh, moisture system coming up underneath it as well. And they're kind of going to meet right over, well, they sort of meet here in the middle of the country, but then they flow over this way, and it's going to be more of a rain event for uh, the northeast. And we can look at that here. We can see the blue colors here is the snow. We can see where it's originating from. We go back to current time. You can see it came right over northern California. It's now crossing over Colorado. And then as we move forward, it dips down a little bit, and then the moisture begins uh, to the back end of Iowa, the front ends of Nebraska and Kansas down here. But you see that strip uh, right here that we've been talking about? That is directly this strip here, and that is allowing that cold air to come down. So we could see that strip here on other charts as well. Uh, let's get back to tropical tidbit. Sorry about that. So there's our strip of cold air. It's touching the moisture, and that is what's causing the winter storm warnings. And you can see that deep blue color is right where we have the warnings um, on the other chart we were just looking at. Mostly Iowa, uh, Minnesota, and then a little bit of that stretch coming down through the Dakotas. And then as we move forward in time, guys, you can see that snow does touch the bottom halves of Wisconsin. Uh, they will probably be next with winter storm advisories and then the upper areas of Michigan right across uh, the Great Lakes here. Um, and then you can see parts of northern New York see snow. A little bit of it reps down underneath, but more than likely a 80% um, rain event to about a 20 to 30% snow event. So 70 rain, 30 snow. 
uh, give or take a lot li uh, like I said more to the east of the Great Lakes with the lake effect snow going on uh, some areas will experience rain from this but it will be cold it's going to be cold for the next couple days uh, we have a little bit of relief coming up after that but then we have a pretty severe system that moves in uh, basically from the same area Northern California but takes more of a dip over Texas and you can see some of these severe spots moving across Louisiana Mississippi Alabama into Georgia and possibly even affecting Florida now with these situations this could be tornado stuff uh, because we have the upflow from the Gulf west to east shear wind we could get tornadoes right around this area here basically the back end of the main front of this storm so areas of Louisiana Mississippi Alabama even Georgia and the panhandle of Florida need to be on alert for tornadoes come April 23rd which is about five days from now you can see that stays really low the jet stream is pushing it down really low and it goes out into the Atlantic Ocean and that's pretty much what we have going on for now, guys. So we could have Winter Storm Yvon. Um, I believe, let's take a look actually really quick. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, yes, we just had Xanto, and this would be Yvon, Y-V-O-N-N-E. -N -N -E. So, guys, we're going to see what happens. I will be back later on this afternoon with an update. Got to get to work. Um, I hope everyone's having a good day. Stay warm if you're in the Northeast, or basically 80% of the country stay warm. Uh, basically, just Texas and Louisiana and those southern states, southern, southern area of those states um, is what's warm today. So, here we go again, guys. Another winter storm could be named any hour now. Uh, and it would be Winter Storm Yvonne, and it's going to begin today as of right now. And then by the time the 19th and 20th roll around, it will be in the northeast with a very significant low pressure system, which means we could be dealing with a lot of wind with this too. But uh, New York, you should prepare in little, a couple strip parts of Pennsylvania, even down into West Virginia it looks like. Uh, be prepared for this storm. Keep an eye on it. It may be named uh, sooner than later. All right, guys, have a great morning. I'll talk to you all this afternoon. Take care. Bye-bye.